Did you know that the United States, with the aid of, of Russia, could have brought an end to the civil war in Syria three years ago? I want to get to that in just a couple of minutes, and that would mean there would be today no migrant or refugee crisis going on. Three years ago, this all could have been brought to an end. I'll tell you why in just a couple of minutes. I, I do want to mention we've got a couple of other things coming up this morning. In about 15 minutes, we're joined by some folks from an organization called Homework Helpers. So if you've got uh, children and you know perhaps they're, they were a bit like mine, they always look for reasons to sort of procrastinate or dawdle. Uh, and, and find reasons that, oh, gee, wait a minute, I've got to do this first. These people are coming along, and they may have some great advice for you if that's a situation that you're dealing with. And I do admit, a great many of us probably know the feeling. We also have coming up in about 25 minutes or so, Dr. Jonathan Tripp from Tripp Family Medicine. He joins us on Wednesday mornings between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, and he'll answer some of your medical questions as well. If you'd like to give us a shout, give us a call at 736-0300 while he's in the studio. 51, coming up on 8 minutes after 8 o'clock. Bill Cowley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. So I was looking over Real Clear Politics website this morning, and there was a link to a writer by the name of Walter Russell Mead, who is, I think, scholarly type of writer. You know, this is one of those guys who writes in big, you know, 10-gallon words. And yet he, he manages to get his point across and I saw this headline, Fecklessness 101, and my first thought was, oh, it's about Mitch McConnell. So I clicked it on. And it says, apparently the Obama administration turned down a Russian offer to dump Assad, that's the Syrian president or, well, dictator, if you will, because the administration was sure he was going to fall on his own. The Guardian, which is a newspaper in London, you're probably not getting much of this in your, your newspapers here on this side of the Atlantic. Wouldn't that be a shocker, huh? Former Finnish president and Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and his name is Marty Adesari, I guess is how he would pronounce it. I'm not Finnish, but I think that's fairly close. Held talks with envoys from the five permanent members of the UN Security Council in February 2012. He said that during those discussions, the Russian ambassador, a fellow named Vitaly Cherkin, laid out a three-point plan which included a proposal for Assad to cede power at some point after peace talks had started between the regime and the opposition. But, according to this Finnish negotiator, the United States, Britain, and France were so convinced the Syrian dictator was about to fall, they ignored the proposal. It was an opportunity lost in 2012, Adesari said in an interview. Now, the Russians hold a lot of sway with Syria, always have. And they're currently also sending advisors and perhaps even some troops into that country, finally looking to perhaps end this bloody civil war that's been taking place there. Over the course of the last week, as this refugee-slash-migrant crisis has really, really gotten to the point of a, you know, breaking Europe, I have heard people saying, well, I was watching the McLaughlin Group. I know a lot of people out there think, all right, Bill, you don't have a life if you're watching the McLaughlin Group. I just happened to see a, a video replay of it on uh, online over the weekend, and the headline caught my attention there too as well. And I, I tuned in, and Eleanor Clift, who's her brother-in-law, was the actor Montgomery Clift. I don't know if many people know that, which ought to tell you just how old she happens to be. She is the House liberal on that program, and she was blaming President George W. Bush and Vice President Dick Cheney because she said their invasion and war in Iraq caused all of this. This is all just a snowball effect from, from what happened at that time. And I thought, hmm. Well, that's an interesting take on all of this. You see, now you've got evidence we could have stopped this in, in Syria three years ago, but for the Obama White House saying, no, 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 we're going to draw a red line of our own, which we will then ignore. And then the Assad will terribly respect us, and he should, because I'm going to show him just what I'm made of. All right, well, you cross the red line. All right, here's a new red line. And Mr. Obama kept backing himself into a corner. There's a there's a, a notion among the American left, of course, that George W. Bush is responsible for Ebola, for the refugee-slash-migrant crisis, and for sunspots. But I think the fact of the matter is, this is a problem that is much, much greater and has been going on much, much longer. There is a writer by the name of Clifford D. May. He is writing today at the Washington Times. He is the president of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. 
I believe he also has a military background and a history background, so he's a very bright guy. He says, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, known as the OIC, has 57 members. Remember that, 57 states? You wonder what the guy was thinking about when he said that. Though Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey are serving as way stations, no IOC states are offering permanently to resettle their co-religionists. We've been talking about this on the program. Why all of this talk that we need to take, as John Kerry says, 100,000, and Germany's taking nearly, nearly a million, and much of Europe is just cracking under the weight of all of these people who are suddenly showing up crossing their borders, and then demanding that they be fed. Because you've got people in the Middle East who won't do, have anything to do with them, even other Islamic countries in other parts of the world beside the Middle East. The Arab League, he writes, has 22 members. They, too, apparently regard this as not their problem. In fact, he says, I'm not finding a word about the exodus on the Arab League's website. The Western media are reporting on the migration as a humanitarian issue, he says, which it is. But they do not bring up the fact that you cannot get other Arab or Muslim countries involved in taking in these people. Somehow it's just plainly ignored so the liberals can continue their effort to destroy Western culture, which is the only answer I can come up with. The deep roots of the crisis trace back to the defeat in the early 20th century of the Ottoman Empire and the dissolution of the caliphate. World War II collapsed the European colonial experiment that followed. So he points out this problem really stems back a hundred years to the end of World War I when the Ottoman Empire came toppling down. And he says that the nation-state system in the region since then has been less than successful. Now, we don't want to be accused of being bigoted, but perhaps the people in that part of the world, you go in and you take a, a, you take a marker and you look at a map and you draw a great big square or you know some other sort of a trapezoidal-looking thing on a map and say, that's your new country, govern it. And you're telling a lot of people who simply would prefer to be in tribal societies that, you know, that now they're thrown in with all of these other people. No wonder it hasn't worked. And again, this has been going on for 100 years. He says the vast majority of new immigrants are not Islamic supremacists. I think we're aware of that. Some will undoubtedly become outstanding citizens of their adopted homelands. I think we're aware of that too. However, he writes, as we should have learned by now, if even a small percentage turns out to be militants, the impact will be significant. Think about the, uh, the Charlie Hebdo case. Now multiply. Already there are reports in the European press of Islamists in Germany recruiting Syrian refugees in the shelters where they are being housed and the mosques where they are going to pray. Oh, and by the way, the Saudis have pledged to help by building more mosques. You realize the Saudis are the biggest mosque builders in the, uh, the United States. All again, part of the overall plan to conquer and you know what? There's a lot of useful idiots in America. Now, why is all of this important in Twin Falls, Idaho? Well, let's get back to this notion. In just a couple of weeks, at least 300 of these people are just going to be plopped down here in this community. And now with John Kerry saying we need to have, you know, 100,000 coming in the next year. Well, you know, gee, we should probably settle them where they'll have some friends and people they are familiar with and relatives. So we could be looking at thousands in this valley. And for all of those people who scream bigot, I saw a great video yesterday from a politician in England, and he was saying, to be a patriot is not racist. The fact of the matter is, the other side, all they do is scream racist or bigot. Let's be honest. Have you considered what the impact could be if there were just a handful of terrorists in the crowd? Have you considered what the impact is going to be on social services in a country with a debt somewhere around $20 trillion and probably $100 trillion if you count unfunded liabilities? Have you considered the disruption that is going to go on in our schools? Have you considered? I mean, there are so many things out there you refuse to acknowledge. You could at least do that before you make a decision to dump these people in this community. It's 816. We have a caller with us. Thank you for your patience. You're on the air on Top Story with Bill Colley on News Radio 1310, KLIX. Good morning on this rainy day, Bill. I am one of those <coughs> racist bigots. So <coughs> if you've read or listened to Ben Vex, he did about this month, you will get a broad picture of what's going on on their 20-year plan, and they are on schedule. Because what's supposed to be happening at this time is the collapse of the European economies and then ours. And they're doing it. It's, yeah. funny, how, it's funny how the people that are swarming the borders are all male. I mean, you would think that if they wanted to do anything, they would want to save their women. 
an issue? Uh, how come the women are staying back so they can be captured and, and raped and, and sold as the men flee? I don't think so. There is a plan here, and, and we need to open our eyes, just like our president. You know, Mr. President that says he's a Christian but does everything like a Muslim. If it, 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 it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's got to be a duck. And, and I'll tell you, the, the government that he presides over, as we know, will lock Christians away in jail if they don't follow the New World Order or his new order. I thank you much for the telephone call. It's 817. There is an Idaho native, in fact, she has moved to, uh, returned home to uh, to the state of her birth by the name of Vicki Davis. And she has a, a website where she compiles a great many, I think probably what you'd call Interesting tidbits about all of this. Well, she's she's researched it in depth, and she has a photograph, side by side photograph of a woman who looks to be starving with a little child who looks to be starving, and below it says, "This is a refugee." And then next to it, you see a big hulking weightlifter coming up on the beach, and it says, "This is not. I mean, this is a migrant. There is a difference between the two, uh, and and that's what we're seeing happen here. And people are saying, "Well, you know, it's too, we can't tell the difference, so we may as well bring them all in." Well, I'm sorry, but there are legitimate concerns people have about the future and about security, and these aren't being answered. And when your local newspaper brings together a bunch of people who stand to profit from this and say, oh, we're going to answer the community's questions, it's a show. It's a show to say, all right, we're giving you, you know, well, we answered your questions, now shut up, we're going to do it anyway. That's what the whole point of that is. They don't want anyone. You're going to come in there. You're going to ask questions. They want them. They're going to have them submitted in advance, so they can select which ones they want. To, and oh well, this one seems hostile. Let's throw that away. Oh, I like this one. This backs up our worldview over here at the newspaper, uh, which happens to be that of the Refugee Resettlement Center. So let's get that question in there. What are we going to do? Have the uh, the moderator sit there and say, so. Uh, you're from the State Department, I guess. How are the wife and kids? It'll be the first small talk event ever devoted to refugee resettlement. How are things going? Have you been on vacation lately? Where'd you go? There won't be anything seriously discussed at this uh, this event. It'll all be, oh, this has worked before. Sure, sure. Well, okay. Other than the guy in Boise who planned to blow up Mountain Home Air, Air Base. Oh, and other than that guy down in Tennessee who shot up that recruiting center and those police officers. Oh, and you know, well, they're all right. But you know what? By gosh, you've got to be a really bad Christian if you don't accept being killed by a Muslim insurgent. So, therefore, and we want to tell you that, you know, that, that you're wrong in your faith. Although we don't necessarily as liberals believe in it, but we want to tell you that you're wrong. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Don't you feel that you're being sold a bill of goods? Don't you feel it's time to start replacing people in government who uh, who are helping, how shall we put it, make this happen? 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Homework helpers on the way on our program this morning. It's 51. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. There is a, if, if you've got time and you like to read, and I realize in this day and age there's so many things competing for your attention, but I have a I have a commentary that I posted last night at our website newsradio1310.com, and it's a, if you go to the on air tab and you click on that, then you'll see my name. If you click on my name, then to the right a new tab will pop up. It'll read Kali's commentary, and it's called "Eve of Destruction and Waves of Refugees." And uh, and I try to break down why this problem isn't going to go away. It may be a more permanent condition, and this is going to topple governments and cultures, and you know entire nations are going to fall before all of this is over. And you can thank uh, you can thank a leftist for that in this country, and really throughout much of Europe. Eight twenty three. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio thirteen ten. KLIX and newsradio 1310.com. I actually cite somewhat of a historical precedent, making somewhat of an analogy as to how sometimes it the problem arises and it's only there for a couple of years, but the people that you're dealing with suddenly go, aha, we have a new way of life. We can plunder. We can we can make money. We see this as a golden opportunity for us. And they never will go back. Remember that old line? There was a song from uh, World War I. And it asked how American troops, how you were going to get them back on the farm after they saw Paris. And this is a this is a little bit of a similar type of approach I'm trying to take with this. And I think people, if you get a chance, 
you should read it. You can also comment on it, too, if you like, and I don't really care if you, if you disagree with it. Just keep it clean. Coming up in just about 10 minutes with us, Dr. Jonathan Tripp will be here from Tripp Family Medicine. He joins us on Wednesday mornings, and it's always great to have him come by because he can take some of your telephone calls while he's in the studio with us, and he can offer you know the, the medical opinion that you may need to hear or at least give you some direction at where you should be going. And he'll be joining us, as I say, shortly. You can reach him at 736-0300 when he's in the studio with us, and he's been talking about any number of things lately. But I've been trying to remind people that his office is expanding. They've been adding new medical professionals. That would mean if you need to see someone in a, in, in a quick turnaround, that is maybe same day or the next day, his office, unlike a lot of, and he's not knocking anyone in some of the larger medical groups, but because he's got an independent office, they sometimes can see you very quickly. They don't say, well, tell you what, can you be here at one o'clock three weeks from Wednesday? That doesn't happen. So we recommend that you you check out his office. He'll have details on how you can contact them. He's looking for new patients. You can tune in, as I say, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning for Better Health with Trip Family Medicine, located right here in Twin Falls on Fillmore Street across from the main post office. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. So I've, I've been sitting here wondering what direction we have to go with this because you know I, I, was, I was speaking to a group a, a couple of months ago about this and I said, you got to realize when it comes to this resettlement program, round one, which is coming up in just a few weeks, the resettlement of this first group in October, that's lost. That's done. We're not turning that around. That's not stopping. Now, you, you could you know, you know, could go out and throw barricades up in the streets, and it might make a great show, but it's not going to stop it from happening. It's, 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 going, it's, it's coming. And I've also tried to say, to all the people out there who, who really think that this is a great program and we need more of it, you're not being affected by a loss of job because of it, generally. So, you know, in your mind, it's like, well, this is great for everybody. You don't really seem to care about a neighbor that might lose a job. Somehow you equate your neighbor's life as being less than some refugee or migrant coming here. See, that's what stymies me. And when people scream, you're a hater, well, wait a minute. Don't, don't you love your neighbors, too? I mean, why, why do you want to send them to the poorhouse by taking away their livelihood, by offering competition for some of the jobs that, you know, they're the only things they can find if they can find a job at all. I, I, I just, I, I'm absolutely stymied by that. Won't some liberal call me up and tell me what the logic is involved in all of that? The telephone number is 736-0300. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. And if you're so gold darn happy to have them here, how come you're not going to bring them into your own homes and look out for them until they actually get on their feet? Are they going to be in your neighborhoods? I mean, some of the people who've been complaining the most, saying that uh, we're, we're, we're being obstinate about this, you live in beautiful homes and neighborhoods where you'll never see these people. The only time you will see them is perhaps at the grocery store or if they're waiting on you at a local restaurant. There was a fellow who testified a few weeks ago in front of the College of Southern Idaho's board about this, and his rationale was, oh, but look at all the great restaurants they brought us. And that's what it's all about? Someone who can actually serve you a, a new dish, you know, some baklava, and wait on you, and, and wait on you hand and foot? Or do you need someone to come over and scrub your toilets and mow the yard, and you're looking for someone you can pay under the table? I think there is so much of that going on here. It is so two-faced on the part of the people who are backing this program. 828, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 51. Looks like the rain's going to be with us for at least a good part of the day. You could say it's well it's well needed, uh, probably so, but nothing's much going to grow now at this point of the year after it falls. There's another story today, and I think this is somewhat related. Stephen Dynan at the Washington Times. Democrats shift radically on illegal immigration as Republicans remain adamantly opposed. So here you have a country with the economy still not healthy, and it hasn't been healthy for eight years and really has had some systemic problems going back 45 or 50 years. And you've got Democrats now, by an overwhelming, two-thirds of them say that we should open the borders and let you know illegal immigrants come streaming in here and just legalize them all. They want amnesty for them. I guess they want to eliminate the border. How do they justify that one? Just 10 years ago, it says that both Democrats and Republicans were opposed by overwhelming margins to this happening. Now, the Democrats, apparently because you don't have any labor unions of any real muscle anymore, 
The labor unions are certainly opposed to that. But most of your modern Democrats are those same people who are sitting out in those gated liberal communities telling you everything's going to be okay if we get flooded with migrants. Because, after all, you know, we're good people. And as good people, and we're better than you are because you're opposed, we good people out here, uh, this will be good because, well, gee golly gosh, we should give them all of your food. I know you don't have as much as I do, but we should all be doing the same. 8.30. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 51. Doesn't look like it's going to be terribly warm over the next couple of days. Tomorrow, the high is only supposed to be in the upper 50s. Actually, I find that quite comfortable after a few days of uh, sweating out 100 and some degrees. We've got Dr. Jonathan Tripp on the way in just a moment. Hope you can stick around.